Live. Welcome back, America. Bill Martinez here coming at you live and fresh every day, 9 to noon Eastern, 6 to 9 Pacific, uh, just about 28 minutes before the top of the hour. And our next guest says the FDA must come clean about the real risk of smokeless tobacco. Uh, Scott Vollen is with us, a public health consultant who has spent more than 40 years involved in issues related to tobacco and human health involving issues ranging from labeling reforms on cigarettes, smokeless tobacco products impacting the U.S., Food and Drug Administration. Scott, welcome to Bill Martinez Live. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you. Hey, thank you for joining us. Uh, you say the Food and Drug Administration is failing to follow established ethical principles by leaving the public in the dark about relative dangers of smokeless tobacco compared to cigarettes. Break that down. You know, most people think that all tobacco products carry the same risk, that they, they're all dangerous, and that's true to some extent. But when you stop burning a product, which the cigarette is, you burn the cigarette and you suck the uh, toxins into your lung, that's what's causing the, the major form of disease, in cancer, heart disease, strokes, et cetera. When you don't burn a product, um, it reduces that risk by 90 to 95%. And the products on the market today are very, very low in risk. They've been able to remove most of the cancer-causing agents, what's called nitrosamines. Um, it's not the same old spit tobacco that people think about. These are products that actually are more sophisticated. They come in a pouch. They, they are tested for all aspects of the, of the product. And this provides an alternative to a lot of people who want to quit smoking. Mm-hmm. We must not forget that the primary cause of de- disease, uh, disease and death in this country is the deadly cigarette. Exactly. 480,000 premature deaths every single year. Mm-hmm. And my personal view is we're not doing enough to give people alternatives. You know, some people use the NRT, uh, the nicotine patches and gums, and the ni- nicotine itself is actually comes from tobacco. Mm-hmm. But there are, there are more and more alternative products b- being developed using new technologies and new science that will give smokers some more options. Exactly. And as I said, some of these uh, non-combustible smoke-free products, such as uh, Swedish snus or some of the dissolvables, and even now e-cigarettes, which need to be regulated, uh, are going to be, be able to provide smokers with some new, uh, new alternatives. Well, I want to get into why uh, e-cigarettes need to be regulated, but just a moment, just to kind of bring everybody back up to speed. Uh, looking at the empirical evidence, according to one study, shows a billion people still smoke every day. Hundreds of millions of people have quit smoking in the past quarter century, but there's still a billion people smoking every day around the world, according to this latest study from Lancet. Uh, And and, and backing up what you were saying, one in 10 deaths worldwide is now caused by smoking, half of them in just four countries, China, India, Russia, and the United States. So, um, you know, to your point, um, you know, smoking-related deaths have gone up nearly 5% in the past 25 years. Uh, as more smokers are now limited, uh, which is which is interesting. You would think they would have gone down, but uh, actually have increased. Yep. And especially in light of what we know before from earlier research, that the tobacco that was used when you and I were growing up, uh, a little bit different than the, t- the tobacco of today. Oh, oh it is, and particularly in the non-combustible side of things. You still have the, uh, <clears throat> the aspects that any time you burn something and suck it into your lungs, I don't care what it is, uh, it's going to cause harm. Mm-hmm. And uh, tobacco, you know, that's why smoking still is a major contributor to the cancer and heart disease, as I said before, and why we need to do more to try to get the, those people who are smoking off those products. A lot of people try to quit cold turkey. They can't do it. They've tried the patch, which is okay. Some are successful in quitting it, but it's a very, very low uh, success rate, around 5%, 6%. Mm-hmm. And, 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 again, technology and innovation have created some new products that actually can, can, can change the whole dynamics of the disease, uh, disease and death figures, uh, not only in this country but around the world. Exactly. Well, Scott, you know, we talked about uh, regulating e-cigarettes. Why do e-cigarettes need to be regulated? Well, because, they're, you know, again, that's something that's very – it's a complex product. It does deliver nicotine in the form of a vapor, a water vapor, so it's not smoke smokes but you can you know we need to know what these companies are doing how they're being developed there are issues related to uh, the batteries that are used issues related to the uh, flavorings that are used 
Um, and my personal view is these are products that could, could well be a major solution to the smoking problem, but we don't want to create, uh, get rid of one uh, problem and create a new one. So we've got to have some general oversight. And my, my view is also, and, and I share, this view is shared by many others, that we need to regulate these products based on their risk. So deadly cigarettes should be very strictly re regulated, whereas at the other end when you're using nicotine products like patches and gums, less regulation. And then there's also on this very, very low end, because they're 90 percent lower in risk than a cigarette, are these new products. Mm -hmm. and, and that includes e-cigarettes. But people must realize that not all e-cigarettes are alike. There's very different Meth, uh, different types of uh, products. There's heat, not burn. There's self-contained products. Uh, and so we need to have some sort of regulatory oversight of them, but not to go so far as to uh, make it a disincentive for people to try these. Exactly. Because the alternative is to continue mm -hmm. to smoke deadly cigarettes. Well, and as you say, uh, people have been using these at, at, up to this point uh, very successfully to help get them off of uh, smoking tobacco, right? Yeah, that's, you know, there, there is evidence that people are actually using them and it's helping them, and there are many, many stories. But then you have a lot of uh, my colleagues in the public health community concerned about the uh, uptake of uh, e-cigarettes by, by adolescents. I think we can deal with both these problems and, and find a win-win solution uh, to, uh, to giving the adult population these alternative products to get them off of the deadly cigarette at the same time, making sure that we're not doing things that uh, are enticing young people to, to try them. So um, I think that's where the, the discussions need to take place. I think there is a common ground to be found, but we haven't gotten there yet because this is sort of turned into a verbal uh, war that's going on out there. And I just don't think that's necessary. And it doesn't serve the public health interest. Well, and this is why I'm glad you're here, because you're bringing some uh, sober consideration uh, you know, like anything, in a free market, uh, when things take off, ideas come in, they hit the marketplace, and they uh, take off like e-cigarettes did. And, uh, you know, in a sense, uh, you know, the cows were already out of the barn with this deal. And then you have the government coming in. And, of course, w what do uh, all these small businesses that are doing, you know, a bang-up business in the e-cigarette industry, they say, well, it's those, it's those tobacco companies, you know, again, with the, the backing of the federal government trying to squash the issue but uh, this becomes a crisis management issue for, you know, for the government uh, and others to, uh, you know, to, to get the message out there to say, hey, th these are the reasons. And what you shared with us right now, some of the reasons, they seem to be very yeah. reasonable as to why you want to you want to regulate uh, e-cigarettes. Yeah. And, I, you know, FDA could have done this differently, in my view. Now, I've worked on FDA issues in tobacco for 40 years and. Mm -hmm was the one who wrote the petitions to the agency um, years and years ago. They could have done this differently. They could have started three or four years ago with having more meetings and, and conferences and uh, involving industry, involving public health and researchers, and come up with some temporary guidance rules as they move forward to implementing something more uh, you know, restrictive if necessary. But what they did is they sort of threw the whole thing out there, put these regulations out there, and said, you've got to comply with them in two years. Right. And that's just sent shockwaves through the e-cigarette industries, but particularly with the small companies mm -hmm. who don't have the capital to be able to do all the things that the FDA is going to require them to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a disincentive, again, to the American public uh, and uh, the public's health. Well, one final question here before we wrap this up. Uh, the Swedish experience, how does it connect to tobacco harm reduction? Well, the, the Swedes have the lowest smoking rates in the world, mm -hmm. especially for a European country. And what, what has been going on in Sweden for many uh, years now is they have provided their, their population with a product called Swedish Snooze. And Swedish Snooze is, comes in a little uh, self-contained packet, and you mm -hmm. put, put it in your mouth, and you mm -hmm. absorb the nicotine, and it doesn't come with all the toxins and everything else. And so they've been able to do that. And we should be focusing on that in this country. Instead of sort of blaming the big tobacco companies for everything, we need to provide people with these lower-risk products now. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, Scott Ball has been with us, uh, public health consultant, spent more than 40 years involved in issues related to tobacco and human health, involving issues ranging from labeling reforms on cigarettes and smokeless tobacco products. Scott, uh, good stuff here. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show and sharing it with us. Yeah, been, been a pleasure. Thank you. Are you married?